The congregation was formed on uh, July 29th, 1900, Feast of St. Martha. Fifteen sisters formed the congregation. The largest number of sisters was in 1962 when we had 460 members. As Sisters of St. Martha, we were founded to do domestic work at the college. And we moved from the college to uh, Bethany as our mother house. We've always known our connection with Earth. And so part of our self-description was as earthy women. So for something like the garden project, it's a, it's a very, it's a natural. It's not a stretch or uh, uh, taking on something new. It's more a case of uh, almost like a new blossom on an old plant. This is an apprenticeship program. It's a learning opportunity for people who have an interest in market gardening or in farming, having their own small farms. So it's for people who have some previous experience but don't yet have the opportunity to have access to their own land. And so the sisters have generously sort of offered this piece of land and the infrastructure that's here, so a hoop house and a greenhouse and tools and implements, things that you would need for a small scale, kind of human scale market gardening operation and um, mentorship from uh, some market gardeners, Jen and David Greenberg. We are the Bethany Garden Program Mentors. We were contacted by the sisters who wanted to pursue their mission of working with youth and food security and ecology. So they hired us to start a one-acre market garden here. Bethany Garden Apprenticeship Program began in the 1990s. We Sisters of St. Martha as a congregation got interested in the Living Universe story. And it made us very aware of our relationship uh, with everything and the interconnectedness of everything. And so we've been working on that since the mid-1990s. and then. Um, about five years ago, Sister Florence was on retreat and she saw the movie called Dirt. This film was speaking about the relationship between humans and the soil. It showed the, the necessity of the soil for human life and also the impact it had on society. So um, as a result of watching that film, uh, it really inspired me. It was very powerful. And I began to think about our own land here and particularly what could we do as Marthas with what we have. So with partnering with Jen and David, we provide the acre of land, also part of our barn for their wash shed and coolers and all that kind of stuff. And then we underwrite the educational cost of the program um, so that young people will have a chance, first of all, see if they even like this because it's hard work, build the basic knowledge they need so that when they start, they have a fighting chance to make it. Uh, we sell lots of carrots and beets and this time of year, lots of root vegetables. Leeks are definitely popular. Uh, One of the main objectives of this farming program is to prototype an efficient, affordable, profitable, ecologically responsible, small-scale farming model. And it's so exciting to see this generation of people in their 20s and they're choosing to get into agriculture. It's, uh, it's becoming a, sort of the cutting-edge thing to do for someone who wants to have a rewarding job and uh, contribute to their community. and practice uh, living lightly on the land. The numbers of farms that have started in the last 20 years across North America is, is staggering. You know, there's many regions that have hundreds of small organic farms surrounding cities. In Nova Scotia, it's, it's, it's burgeoning. There's probably dozens of new farms that have opened up in the last 10 years. And 
I think that trend is only going to get stronger. We grew up with a, a, an idea of an elsewhere God, that God lived someplace else and visited the earth every once in a while or sent God's spirit or, and then when Jesus came, the incarnation. But it was like God was an elsewhere God. Um, when science began to introduce how far back Earth's creation was, and then how far back we know about the universe, um, and saying that that's just the tip of the iceberg for what we know, um, then you have to rethink. So what is your relationship with God? Where is God? And so if that's true, then everything is a unique expression of some aspect of God. And that if we are honoring God, then we need to honor everything that God honors and loves. And I would say that's always been very much part of the Sisters of St. Martha and all our work. We are off the earth and it's connected to our history. We had a farm here uh, when the sisters moved first to Bethany. We moved 1921. They started on a small scale in 1922 and the farm closed in 1970. So just the whole awareness of uh, how our earth is so uh, fragile, just like us. Maybe previously our work had centered on human beings. And now we were being asked to um, expand that same love and care to all of creation. So that's been our challenge and our journey. And I would say our gardening project is one little way that we've, that we've been trying to work in that direction. They see this is an opportunity to leave a legacy in this area to help northern Nova Scotia and particularly the Antigonish area uh, revive uh, an agrarian tradition and to contribute to the food security of the area. And uh, very much like they pioneered their work in healthcare, they see uh, the state of agriculture in, in need of some fresh thinking and revival of old ways. So. I've known quite a few of the Marthas in my life. I've some relatives here, my mom went to nursing school here, and um, it seems as though most of these ladies who I, I have met have really um, wanted to bring positive change to their community. And from learning about the Anakinish movement, we also see that community spirit, along with their commitment to environmental justice, has led them to see this as being a good contribution. Pretty perfect. <laughs> I think the Sisters of St. Martha have always been known to be from the people and of the people. Okay, it's like we've, um, although we, we started at the college uh, doing domestic work, it's, it was our working with Dr. Cody at the very beginning. We wanted to go and they weren't sure they wanted us to move out. And he was the one who said, if you want to keep them, you have to let them go. So when he was looking for support when they were trying to revitalize the rural areas, the Marthas were very much a part of that. Some of our sisters were instrumental in helping that bring that about. So their sister Irene Doyle, very involved, and sister Marie Michael who the, the Cody Library is named after her, like our sister Sarah McPherson. He taught agriculture at the Antigonish High School. She's very passionate about everything she believes in. I am the niece of Dr. Hugh McPherson. He was one of the uh, great promoters of organic farming that you hear so much about today. Now just have a historical consciousness and place yourself back in 1934, when the Depression was at its height. There was poverty everywhere. There was hunger in the midst of plenty. 
I saw my father grow fields of vegetables and turnips and that type of thing and having to feed them to the cows because he couldn't sell them during the Depression. The people didn't have that sense of what was needed to, make a, to have a good crop. They didn't have the chemistry. They didn't have the soil chemistry. They didn't have the, the ability to market their fish. Our sisters, right from the very beginning, when the church really needed to move out to the rural areas, we did that. <laughs> well, this was a nice interview. <laughs> Good opportunity to talk about the garden. It's true, yeah. yeah. Certainly. It seems like there are a lot of young people very interested in growing healthy food and concerned about um, our earth and what's, how can we um, make it more healthy. And in doing that, we become healthy ourselves. You know, a lot of us do have good opportunities to either purchase land um, that hasn't been farmed for a while or pick up where our family has left off maybe a couple generations ago. So, you know, there's maybe a bright future. We weren't sure how it was going to evolve, but we're certainly pleased with the outcome. What has been a marvel to me in the last 20, 30 years, as a number of sisters get older and we have fewer sisters entering, we've had to stop doing a lot of the works that we were doing. So, on one hand, that's going on. But whenever we get together as Marthas, the feeling isn't of dying. There is such an energy. And so what I find fascinating is the energy gets expressed as we, we no longer have many people who can be out there doing social work, which we did for years and years. But now we belong with the Sisters of Charity Federation, and we have an NGO at the UN. So it's like, are we no longer doing social work? Yes, we are but at a whole different level. And as we're getting smaller, in some ways, our vision is opening wide. And so here we are working on a whole different level and again, trying to find ways to bring that back here. So our way of service uh, seems to be changing, um, but we're still very much in service.